Yo, it's Guido. Miserable Monday, but instead of a bunch of small snippets, I've got two games for you. And we're going to talk about those games where you just can't get anything going on, man. These are definitely Monday games. I'm in my Chimera, the Chim Chimney. We are on uh, Himmel's Shire. And initially, I looked at this and went, all right, I'm bottom tier, medium tank. Let's go to the middle woods up here, right? Up into the 100 acre woods back there and uh, see what we can do. Didn't really want to go to the heavy brawling area. I didn't feel like I had much business there. Then I was kind of looking at the setup. Well, that's a Type 5, a 110E4, and then some other Tier 8 heavies. And I went, you know what? Chicken butt, that's what. No. I decided to go over to the heavies. Now, the calculus or the decision here is... Let's go over there and be that annoying medium, which I, I do quite a bit in my mediums. I do hit pretty hard. This really is kind of a heavy with no armor, basically. I mean, it's got a really nice alpha gun on it. What are we sitting here at? Uh, 440, so it hits pretty darn hard like a tier 9 would. Even more so than most tier 10 mediums at 390 alpha. So we're going to truck on over this way. What I end up getting myself into, and we'll speed this up, get rid of the preliminaries here it is a situation where I, I can't get much going on right they send a bunch of tanks up here and my idea is to support the IS-4 and it looks like the 252U Kunza Panzer's up there we get rid of a KPZ-07 we have the 110E3 who pushes up offensively and when I see all this going on as I'm trucking over here I'm like alright we can get something done here so we're gonna come over here Bit of a dangerous poke. I'm not really not really pointing where I need to be, and I'll back out. So I thought about going in again, but more than likely he had more help, and it's it's a type five. He's not gonna have much trouble pinning me. The IS4 is gonna come in. I want to see if he fires, and maybe I'll sneak out there, but got nothing going on. And we'll just sit here. Now, one of the reasons I go into places like this is as I'm looking for opportunities to be annoying to track people, to pop out and shoot after they've shot time shots all that good stuff but the other one is to just be an extra gun sitting there that if they do push around the corner I can help I can help uh, punish them now the IS4 says hey fall back and I get out of his way so let's give him the inside right no real reason for me to be sitting on the inside he can get in here and do side scraping and whatnot but look at the crowd they brought up a 124 a type 5 an E50 the Mivi a Lerva and the Emil 2. Now, th this is a vast majority of their power, right? Two of their 10s, their Emil 9, their E50, the Low, and the Mivi. I mean, that's that's a good portion of their power. We have a decent amount over on the west side. Some guys in the middle camping are Emil 2. I don't know what the heck he's doing. Not even sure what that position is. What is he? Is he, is he hurt? No, he's just in that little town down there for some reason. I want to watch. I want you to watch what happens here when we start working, potentially trying to pop out and get some shots. This is very interesting. What happens right here? I'm just kind of looking around, going, "All right, are they going to push to the left? If they are, I go there. I don't really want to leave the IS-4 because I think these guys are just trying to figure out if they can get enough power here to come around the IS-4 and take them down. We do have this 430U up here, infamous War Pigs, who's giving them trouble. And I didn't look at the bounce. I come in here and I try to get that shot highly angled. And he decides to shoot me. Well, I'm the furthest one out. So type 5, I think, thought he might be able to get in there and get a shot on the IS-4. Okay, I soak up the shot. And we'll just back out. That's about half my hit points at 533. Maybe a one-third. Here it comes again. And I bounce the IS-4. Trying to get away. And I'll be damned if the 124 doesn't take a shot on me. Now he could very well have taken one on the IS-4, but I live, right? So there's two shots that the IS-4 didn't have to take. And I'm not saying you're going to go out and drive out and soak up shots. That's really not a great plan for overall win rate. But sometimes you have a Monday and you show up to this fight and you go, well, I'm going to have a hard time getting anything done. It's unfortunate they sent so many tanks, but this is a pretty good brawl. We got one two, three, four, five, six enemy tanks against one, two, three, four, five. We have two of our tens. They have two of theirs. A fairly even fight right here. So I'm actually glad that I came over here and just became this guy. And to some extent, it's keeping them a bit honest. The 430U is doing a good job as well. 
So they know if they come around the corner, they're going to take a hit from me, although I haven't managed to dole one out yet. And even if they came around the corner and wasted a shot on me or took a shot on, at me, that would be one less that would be going into the IS-4. So the IS-4 is doing a really epic job of side scraping here, having a pretty good game. I'm just waiting for my ammo rack. Once I get my repair kit sorted out, I'm going to repair the ammo rack. The 123, that concerned me a little bit. He came around this way, which left the other side a little weak. So kind of watch. I think they make a little push over here pretty soon. Get a shot by the Emil. He's trying to shoot the IS-4. I kind of expected him to maybe make a push. That's about where I thought. But now we got an E-50 and a 124, and now the Type 5. All on one shot, shot status. So they've been whittled down. And again, I'm not claiming that my presence here was the key to winning this, but it was certainly part of the calculus as they were looking at it. As Basically, as long as your gun is still there, and you're not peeking the poking and giving them shots that they don't deserve, then you're doing something. All right. Ideally, I'd rather have 2,000 damage or 3,000 damage, but that's not how this game went. That is not how this game went. Would it have been different if I went over to the west or the middle? Perhaps I might have had more damage. But this is the fight that matters. We're actually we're going to win here. Basically, we take out all their big tanks. They're all dead. There you go. And got it done by basically doing, not doing a whole lot. Obviously, you want to do more damage, be more effective, get in there, all that good stuff. But the way it played out, that's how it had to be done. Now watch this shot. Boom. <laughs> oh, great. No damage. This game just felt like a game I was just not going to be able to get any damage in. Right? That guy dies. Took two shots from dudes pushing in. I'm gonna back out of this, I think. Who just focused me, or even, maybe they were aiming at the IS-4 and missed. But in any event, I took two big hits and basically down to a one shot. So I had to change gears, figure out how I was going to be effective. Watch this. Like, okay, yeah, let's just go ahead. No, right into his turret. That's a thick turret. Terrible aim. So now we're still at zero damage. One thousand twenty-seven assist. <laughs> we'll speed this up. So I hang out here for a bit. We're going to come up and over, and then we're going to move forward. So I come up thinking, ooh, I'll get a CS-52 shot. He starts taking all kinds of hits. Come around here to this bush. Maybe I'll get a shot on the Lurva. We get a shot here. Okay, he'll back out. Nope, not. Okay, no, he's going to die to those guys. Uh, maybe I can uncover him, and no. <laughs> come up here. I mean, this is a total Monday game right here. Ends up being a win. I see the... Centurion, he's a one shot, so we're going to come up here. Maybe I can figure out a way to get a shot on the Udas. I see him coming across. I'm like, I'm just. <laughs> Didn't get a shot on him. Someone else killed him. <laughs> there you go. Only 1,027 assists. Didn't do a whole bunch in terms of assist or damage. But you can take games like this, even when you can't get things going. And I'm going to tell you, being alive at the end while at least being up forward and being a presence is going to increase your win rate. This is probably a 1 in 100 game where you do this poorly and you have a decent amount of impact. But that's 1%, isn't it? Right? Takes you from 50 to 51. 1 in a 100, one in 100 game where doing that little was fairly significant. Again, not claiming it was the reason we won, but it was very helpful to the guys over there and it certainly was part of the reason they didn't push around the corner. Plus, our guys did a nice job. The IS-4 was side scraping. The 430U was kicking people's butt from that whole down spot. We were whittling them away. The enemy team was getting aggressive. All that stuff. But that's the stuff you're analyzing while you're sitting there playing the game. And after two hits, you know, I'm trying to get in there and be that annoying guy. But after two hits, now I just have to be support by presence. And that is important. L lasting to the end of the game and having your gun available to help. Big deal. All right, second example. All right, second example, I'm in my uh, my Shovel Panzer, Rom Panzer boy, M48 RPZ. It's got the shovel on the front. It's extremely slow. It's it's a tier 9 hole at tier 8 with kind of an anemic gun and no power. I don't know. It's a, it's a weird little premium tank. Not very good. we got a send lock in the middle. We are here on Himmel's Kharkov, Kharkov Dorf, and I'm going to head out here to the west side and go up into the hills. All right? could have gone down with the heavies and try to be the annoying medium. This is another map where that can kind of work for you. I'm going to come up here and catch the JP. Maybe, you know, it's going to be a little while later. And my intention here is just to be a support kind of guy. We have an ABMT, AMBT, 
and the stupid 122TM. The 122TM is going to have a field day. Have a field day with my... And I get tracked, I get locked down by this Progetto. And thank goodness the angle's right. Or maybe he was shooting the outside track. I don't know, but I get away with that. Tracks me a couple times and I only take one hit total from him that does any damage. So my tumor, the old Tuma there, is going to come up and over that hill constantly. So I don't want to go up here and play peek boom with the 122TM. I have virtually no chance of pinning his turret. His weak spots are tiny compared to mine, so I'm just going to sit back and support as much as I can. It's unfortunate that this thing is so slow, so I get lit right there. The good news is there's no artillery, so I'm not going to get whacked while I'm working this bush right here or this spot. And the poor 122TM, he's... He's looking for help and wants people to shoot at the 122 over there. I'm talking about our 122TM. But options are limited. So I'm now in kind of the same situation as we were in the game before on a different map where I'm just trying to be a support guy. I'm trying to get to that weak spot. It's the other side, I think, that's a better hatch. But he's doing a nice job minimizing the amount of exposure. Take a quick shoot shot. A quick shoot. Quick shot at him. You can see that the Su-130 Panther II, and I think there's a Scorpion up there. They got a bunch of TDs. And we start to win. Not by a ton, but it's looking good down in the city. The guys are doing well, and some of their mediums are making some kind of foolish pushes up into the middle. We're going to get some reaction from them, from our team, and we're going to clean them up. That's going to be helpful. They're down four tanks to our two, and so I'm just holding what I got. You know, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them, and right now is when to hold them. I'd like to be active. I like to be up there pushing like the 122 is, but with the situation we have going on right now, I'm just not seeing the possibilities. I just feel like either the AMBT or the 122TM or both of them are going to start just picking apart my hatch. Now, if they make a push and I can get a shot into them, that'd be great. I was thinking about right here, potentially trying to figure out how to get down there and get the Progetto. Shots were coming in and then all of a sudden he just got absolutely nuked. So the RPZ, the KPZ, sorry, 07RH, I think he gets gang tackled here in just a moment and we deal with that little push up the middle and now our heavies are filtering through the town and again not much going on folks right zero damage 480 bounced no assist we're going to come over here and start trying to work this bush the kpz moves into the middle i don't see him actually so i missed that i was really busy looking forward because i was sort of figuring i might get spotted and i wanted to get out of here if i had to so we're going to push in here now we got the JP2. I finally get a decent shot on somebody. We thump him and we'll back out. We didn't get spotted. And I was thinking about blind shooting and then he gets killed by the Scorpion G behind me. Or down. Actually, I guess he's down in the city. This was just a little bit too close. I get lit right there, so we're going to have to back out. Bounce the Scorpion. This thing does have decent armor for a medium, to be honest. The turret's really pretty good. Minus the weak spot. So shots from way over there where that Scorpion G is, he's going to have a harder time poking at the, the tumor, whereas the AMBT and the 122TM are going to have a much easier time that close. So we kill the KPZ-07RH. The guys are still kind of fighting down the city. Things are looking good. It actually gets a little more even here, a little more even than I thought it would be. But again, we're just kind of holding what we've got for the moment. Looks like the Scorpion and the one. 105, 1000 are looking for shots on the side of these guys if they can get them. Our 122TM is in bad shape. He's a one shot and the 416 gets killed. And now I'm a little bit worried right here. A little bit worried because if they get a decent push going over here, we do have a prototype behind us. Then the 122 gets a thump on that guy. That's good. We do have a prototype behind us, but it's not looking great. And this is where I thought they might be coming. I said, well, if they come around the corner, I'll go ahead and shoot him right here. But he's just playing snipe games at turrets or at hatches or turret hatches thought about maybe trying to get into his lower plate but nope we'll back out of that getting out of the way of the 122 I, won't, I don't want to run, in, run into him if he comes up and over I'm going to accept maybe a hit on me to get to him and I think he kind of knows that he sort of stopped if he kept coming I was thinking about coming back up I'll, I'll accept the shot hope the armor works out and get into his lower plate but I wasn't able to do so so, uh, just not an epic game, guys. 240 damage. This is feeling very Monday-esque. 689. Get another little bounce off the AMBT. Nice thing about that is he took... Well, I guess that's an auto-reloader, isn't it? Now that I think about it. So, it doesn't really hurt him that much to take that shot back out and reload. That's the bummer about the auto-reloaders in terms of trying to deal with them. 
if they take that one little poke, it's not like they've lost a shell that they have to deal with ha not having. It'll eventually come back. Especially if he's able to get back into cover. So now I'm just trying to figure out. The 122 is falling back. We're starting to wrap around. See what I was talking about right there about how it looks to be a little more even than it was. Map control wise, we're in great shape. Thing I'm concerned about now with this kind of hold'em strategy is I don't want to really lose complete contact with the two guys here because if they fall back and start beating up our guys that are pushing down in the south, we could have trouble. If they clean all that up, then we're in trouble. So at some point we have to get on our horse and move, and I'm late doing so. I wish I'd have moved much sooner than this. I was halfway expecting the 122 and the AMBT to come in here and try to shoot me. So we're going to come in here and go for this guy's lower plate. That's what I was talking about earlier. We do get the shot, and then he dies. So very good. We don't quite kill him at 232. That was quite the bummer right there. 240 alpha gun. Look how slow this thing is, especially going up hills. It's just so painful. Might do to have a turbo on this thing. The AMBT. He was waiting for me. So he saw me moving after I killed the 122. He knew I was headed up and over. So he was just there waiting. Map control is going to start working really nicely for us. I'd love to get... There we go. So once the 130 PM dies, the 50 TP is still in town, I think. But that's a pretty old spot. And then I get spotted there. Probably the AMBT, but then I'm a little bit worried that maybe the Scorpion has swung around this way some ways. The 44-100's in a nice spot. Monday game, guys. 472 damage, 689 assists. That's it. Just over a thousand combined, which is not going to light anyone's you know life on fire right there. Just trying to be as careful as possible. Staying active, but not dying. You know, you can come up with this kind of score from sitting back there. But if you're forward and you have this kind of score and you're at least actively trying to help the team spot, find them, keep them locked down, be there for the flank to start working, all of those things, then I, I really think you're, you're doing what you need to do to help win, to cause wins. I've talked about it in the past. There's, I think, in my opinion, there's a lot of ways in this game to help facilitate or to cause wins that don't include just purely doing damage and assist. Those are great things. I mean, if you're going to drop 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 at tier 8, then you, you definitely had a lot to do with the win. This is a little more nebulous. It's not a critical decisive thing, but it's important to the flank we're on and important to the game as a whole, to the match as a whole, that I'm able to maintain my votes, stay in the game. I figure he's probably a little lower right there since I didn't get spotted. And I do know this position and how it works. And if he's in it, then I actually have an approach that's covered. So there's not a whole lot he can do. This thing is so slow. I'm going to eat a shot coming up and over. And I know I basically have to kill him. So he shoots that guy. Then he gets down to a one shot. We'll just auto aim. Bounce like a Muppet. And uh, the 44-100 kills him. So, oh my dude, that was a Monday effort right there. The auto aim bounced. <laughs> Because he's got the pretty good armor on the front. It was a terrible angle. I did uh, a whole... Actually, I did no damage. Perfect. I did no damage. He did 21 damage to me ramming. I did nothing to him. That's... <laughs> that's Monday, man. We'll speed this up. So I got a whole 472 damage. And I'm going to get it one more shot in. Because this... 50 TPPR... Has worked his way back into the middle. When I was coming in here... I didn't realize he was in this little weird dip. He'd come from the city, and, or maybe he'd been in it the whole time. I thought he was down in here with the 105-1000, but he knows the jig is up. So he just rolls in. He's going to try to kill this guy off, and maybe he's going to get me. But I put a shot on him. And then I'm thinking, ooh, I want to drive on top of him when he goes into the pit. But he gets nuked before I can even get quite reloaded. I'm trying to decide how I can jump in there and crash into him. So I've done a whole 697 damage, 689 assists. That is quite the Monday workmanlike game right there. In both those examples, though, I'm at a critical point doing what I can to help. And while I didn't really play an amazing game on either one of them, I was at least an active participant. And I think that's a big thing for newer players and lower skill players who are looking to improve. Even when you have bad games or you can't get anything going, you have it a Monday Right, Monday has just showed up on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and says, hey, how you doing? Here's your five-game losing streak. 
it's this kind of thing that can help break you out of it, increase your win rate, and maybe even increase your damage doing by keeping you in the game. I had a coaching session a couple days ago. We talked a lot about that, where the his DPG was relatively low in a certain tank, and, and we actually lost all four games, but the DPG was well higher average in those four games because we were able to kind of stay alive, keep his gun in the game, and improve on the DPG. Now, keep working on that kind of thing, and those will start to turn into wins. Not all of them, but I'm only 58%, right? So I only win 58 out of 100 battles. And while 58% looks amazing to a lot of people in 60 and 62 and 65, the difference between 58 and 50 in percentage doesn't seem like a lot. But in terms of what you do in the game, it's a lot. And this kind of thing right here is one of those things that will help to increase your win rate. All right, that's all I've got. Monday is over. Tomorrow is Tuesday. You guys have a good evening, and we will see you. But wait, there's more. I forgot all about this. I want to, I have to include this because this is Chuck and the old Chuck Accor, and he's going to do Chuck things right here, my friends. He's going to do Chuck things, all right? We were talking about it. We were like, all right, can we? Uh, are we going to be able to uh, dive off this? And my entire life was uh, like trying to figure out we're winning by miles, and everyone on stream said do it. So this... Some of you have seen this, but let's check it out. Here comes Chuck. He's kind of trying to figure out how he wants to do the approach. Right? The dismount's important. How you dismount is very important. So here we go. We got, yep. Okay, look out there, Carnarvon. Here we go. And off we go. Oh. <laughs> we just shoot him in the face. Doesn't matter. He's not looking at us anyway. He has no idea what's happening. He's being pelted by manticores. <laughs> pelted by manticores. But it's it gets better. It gets better because Chuck cannot be defeated. He can fall off cliffs, tuck and roll. It's all good. He gives a punch to the Type 5, and he's like, I'm going to leave my light work to you fellas. And he's like, okay, good. Yep, there we go. Trust but verify, right? Leave the light work to the little guys. Now, the thing about Chuck is he's a little guy. He was never known as like the big, muscular, you know, Arnold kind of dude. But he's going to beat you in any way he knows how. So we just come around here, and we got a great big old... Conqueror, and we're going to sneak in behind. The Conqueror comes up, and he thinks he's going to crush Chuck, right? He thinks, I'm going to crush Chuck. <laughs> but Chuck crushes you at the same time. <laughs> All right, now that's it. You guys have a good rest of your Monday. See ya.